Moon Knight is awesome. Here's a character who kicks people so hard they vomit, punches ghosts so hard they explode, has once fought criminals in his underwear, crashed a plane into a building to stop Taskmaster, and even talked a child abductor into surrendering, then immediately smashed his face in with a baseball bat. He's essentially a much more brutal Batman, but dresses in all white because he wants the criminals to see him coming. He is amazing. On the surface, his adventures might seem like simple action stories, but there's much more to Moon Knight than his beautiful fight scenes. You see, Moon Knight struggles with mental illness, and by reading his comics, we may very well be able to reveal a few flaws in the US criminal justice system. Mark Spector was a boxer slash marine slash mercenary who was working under this other mercenary, Raoul Bushman, in Egypt. They were on the search for an active archaeological dig site that uncovered a temple dedicated to Khonshu, the moon god. Naturally, Bushman wanted to loot all of these goodies, because that's what bad guys do, so he goes and kills a member of the dig crew, then open fires on civilians, but our buddy Mark is like, Come on, man, don't do that. Bushman shoots Mark and leaves him to the harsh elements of the Egyptian desert. He stumbles towards the feet of a statue of Khonshu, then he dies. But that's not the end. Oh no, dying is easy, young man. Living is harder. Spectre comes back to life and believes he is to become the Moon's Knight of Vengeance. Get it? Moon Knight. And if all that sounds familiar, it's because it's almost verbatim what I said in my first Moon Knight video from about three years ago. That was just kind of a brief overview of the character. I didn't feel like rewriting it. But let's dive in a little deeper into Moon Knight. One of his defining characteristics is his mental state. To overstate things for the sake of a lame pun, he's a lunatic. Ooh. Yep. You see, when Mark Spector came back to New York after his origin story, he established a few different personalities. Millionaire Stephen Grant for making high-profile contacts, cab driver Jake Lockley for making connections on the streets, his regular Mark Spector identity, the Moon Knight identity, and even Khonshu himself. Juggling these personalities deteriorated Mark's mental health. It's because of this that some writers will clearly state that Mark Spector has Dissociative Identity Disorder, or DID, formerly known as Multiple Personality Disorder. Heck, there was even a short run where he would talk to hallucinations of Captain America, Spider-Man, and Wolverine in order to solve crimes, going so far as to manufacture versions of their iconic weapons and equipment for his own uses. Captain America's shield, Wolverine's claws, and Spidey's web shooters. He even raided a strip club dressed in full Spider-Man costume over his own Moon Knight costume. In that series from 2010, he constantly had to ask if what he was seeing was real or if it was a hallucination, because his mind wasn't all there. Even his newest series brings into question whether any of Mark Spector's adventures as Moon Knight were real in the first place, or if he imagined the whole thing while he's been locked away in an asylum. Jury's still out on that one, but here's the kicker. When Mark finally sought help in the first issue of the Marvel Now run, it was revealed that he didn't have DID at all. In fact, the diagnosis was a little more supernatural than that. Spectre's brain has been, quote, colonized by an ancient consciousness from beyond space-time, end quote. That consciousness, of course, being Khonshu, the moon god, Khonshu has four aspects. The Pathfinder, the Embracer, the Defender, and the Watcher of Overnight Travelers. And a secret fifth aspect, the one who lives on hearts. When Mark was brought back to life by Khonshu, these aspects colonized his brain. He cycles through all of them while his mind desperately tries to make sense of them by applying identities to each one. Moon Knight's struggle with mental health is particularly interesting because it brings up an important discussion in regards to our criminal justice system. There are times in the comics when Mark is oblivious to what his other personalities do. Like when Mark finds out that Khonshu bought a bunch of ancient artifacts, he remarks, I don't remember buying most of this. To which Khonshu replies, Perhaps you weren't supposed to remember. Now, what happens if instead of buying antiques, the personality currently inhabiting Mark Spector's mind and body commits a crime that he isn't even aware of? Is he responsible for those actions? Our current justice system has a few problems when it comes to mental health. It seems pretty simple and intuitive though, right? Prove beyond a reasonable doubt that someone committed a crime and then punish that person for that crime. But, within the past decade, there's been a steady increase in cases involving the defense blaming criminal actions on diseases and disorders in the defendant's brain. Remember how the trial of Punisher in Daredevil Season 2 included Nelson and Murdoch trying to pin Frank Castle's actions on a previously sustained brain injury? Cases like that have been on the incline. Cases with somebody saying, yeah, I committed a crime, but it's not really my fault, my brain made me do it. Here's the proof. So, 
Could you go a little easier on me? And actually, that's become a rather compelling argument in court, especially if you have visible evidence, like a brain scan, or like in Punisher's case, an x-ray of his skull. One can point out to the judge and jury that there's clearly something abnormal going on in one's brain, and that does tend to make sentences lighter. But that's the problem. You need to be able to see the spot that's causing the criminal behavior. As far as we know with Moon Knight, his mental problems aren't physical. They're supernatural. It's possible that they wouldn't show up at all on any sort of brain scan. He'd look completely normal, yet still act abnormally. Now, assuming that you don't believe in supernatural phenomenon, you may be wondering how this applies to real-world criminal law. As neuroscientist David Eagleman outlines in his book Incognito, the technologies we have today for examining the brain are incredibly crude. He likens it to asking an astronaut in space to look down on Earth and judge how America is doing. The astronaut may be able to see large forest fires and storms, but would be unable to see the details of a viral outbreak or the stock market crashing. Similarly, current tools allow for us to see the big stuff in brains, like tumors and physical trauma, but we can't yet make out all the little things. If there's a neurological disease that's causing abnormal behavior but we can't see it, much like Moon Knight's supernatural disorder, then that argument isn't going to fly in court, simply because there's no visual proof. But there's a flip side to this. As technology advances and we're able to see the tiniest details of the human brain, there's a very real risk that everyone could claim this defense. Every criminal could get these new high-resolution brain scans and scientists could pick it apart neuron by neuron to find 100% of the time that there will always be a neurological reason for abnormal behavior. If we give lighter sentences to those whose brains have diseases and disorders that we can see, then we'll have to do the same thing as we keep finding smaller and smaller malfunctions. It's not just Punisher or Deadpool or Hank Pym who likely have injuries and disorders that you could clearly see on a modern brain scan. It'll be every single character who exhibits abnormal behavior, even in the slightest. As Moon Knight explains, even without his DID or Khonshu inhabiting his mind, he already has mental issues simply because he chooses to be a superhero. Quote, I dress up like a little-known moon god and strike fear in the hearts of men. Did you really think I was normal? Do you think that any of us, any of the costumes are normal? We're all crazy. This is a sentiment that Tony Stark backs up as well, explaining that every superhero has to be nuts to do what they do. While it's delivered like a joke, it's not entirely inaccurate. As another neuroscientist Wolf Singer suggested, quote, we should grant that for everybody, there is a neurobiological reason for being abnormal. Eagleman argues that it cannot be a just legal system if we give someone a harsher punishment simply because we can't see what's wrong, even though there is something wrong. Wrong. But importantly, he's not at all arguing that we need to exonerate every criminal once we have the tools to find out precisely what's happening in their brains. Instead, he explains, asking if something is a person's fault or the fault of some mangled wiring in their brain is the wrong question to ask. In fact, it doesn't even make sense as a question. We shouldn't be trying to figure out if a crime you commit is your fault or your brain's fault because you are inseparable from your brain. Eagleman asserts that everything from your genetics to your history and experiences are all silently steering every single decision that you make, even if that decision seems to be spontaneous, like landing your moon-shaped plane on a fleeing thug. Free will might exist, but if it does, then, quote, it's only a small factor riding on top of enormous automated machinery, end quote. And if free will is definitively proven to exist, doesn't really matter, since a large majority of our behavior isn't controlled by us consciously, so blameworthiness is the wrong question to ask in the legal system. So, what is the right question to ask? Eagleman proposes this. How is a person likely to behave in the future? What is the probability of future recidivism? I.e., are they likely to go out and commit more crimes? If they're less likely to repeat criminal behavior, judges can afford to be more lenient. If they're more likely, a longer sentence is called for. Okay, sounds pretty straightforward. But how are we supposed to figure this out? Well, parole officers who use their gut tend to get it right about 50% of the time, and that's not an ideal system. You may as well flip a coin. Luckily, researchers are developing algorithms that are much more reliable ways to find out how likely someone is to commit more crimes once released. And it's already more accurate than human judgment. I assume the algorithm was created by Dr. Zola. So I wrote an algorithm. And that's actually one of the biggest criticisms with this method. Suppose you're arrested for some simple crime, like damage to someone else's property. Property. Then when you get your brain scanned, scientists find that you're very likely to commit a much more dangerous crime, like crashing a plane into a building. Obviously they won't be able to detect crimes that specific, but you get my point. They might predict that you have a higher chance of being a threat to society. You could be punished for that potential future crime, a crime you have yet to commit, 
simply because they found a little spot in your brain that suggests you might someday partake in more serious criminal activities. This is something we'll talk more in depth about in a future video, but let's wrap this episode up first. Moon Knight's mental problems are a staple of who he is. Whether the writers blame it on a currently known disorder, a supernatural force, or perhaps a combination of the two, he's an amazing character who can spark an interesting conversation about the human brain. Unless you guys don't really exist, and this is just, this the whole thing is a, f a figment of my imagination. What do you think? Should criminals be punished based off of blameworthiness or the probability they'll commit more crimes in the future? On a somewhat lighter note, do you think that all superheroes have something abnormal in their brains? Let me know what you think in the comments. If you like this video, here's another great one on the science of memory and whether or not Batman can even remember the death of his parents. Spoilers, probably not. And you know what? Here's that super old Moon Knight video I did three years ago. Don't watch it. It's terrible. And make sure you hit that big sexy subscribe button so you don't miss out on all the new videos we make for you every week that explore the history, science, art, and philosophy behind your favorite comic book superheroes. My name is Scott, reminding you to read between the panels and grow smarter through comics. See ya.